Hello, how are you? I hope you're doing well. In this video, I'm going to be talking about two different um, techniques that I can't believe I've never used before. And you're probably going to watch this thinking, Gareth, are you crazy? I've done that a thousand times. What are you playing at? But no, generally, I've never done this before. So I'm quite surprised. And um, yeah, it was uh, a bit of fun, but we'll talk about that now. Um, and the first one is basically, I was down the beach with my mate Dan. Um, it was the first time we'd been down the beach in absolute ages, so I felt like a bit of a novice. I hadn't got a clue about seascape photography, or all my skills and all my abilities seemed to just bugger off and leave me. <laughs> I didn't have a clue what I was doing. So yeah, I felt like a complete novice once again. So I didn't know what to do with filters, I didn't know what to do with composition. I was literally like, oh, I don't know what. And as the, the, pretty much the tide was going out, we were down Mumbles Bay, and as the tide was going out, I spotted a composition. I thought, this might work, I'll, I'll give this a go. But I didn't know what to do with filters. I thought I'd just get the composition and get my skills back and try and jump back on the bike slowly. So as I was waiting for the seventh uh, wave to potentially not even bother coming back, um, I thought, you know, I'll just focus on the sky. The sun is about to come up over the headland. I will just focus and meter for that uh, lighthouse in the background and meter for the sky, just so I've got that shot. I've got the shot with the sky. Um, and I know any second now, probably before I had a chance to get a filter out, because uh, my bag was goodness knows where, um, then the, the sun would have come, burnt, come over and been too, too bright for the filters anyway. So I thought, I'll get the sky shot in the bag. And then I thought, well, I've got the magnetic case filter, which just slaps on the front of the lens. What I'll do now is I'll do, um, I won't put a grad on, because I'm expecting that sun to come up anyway. So what I'll do is I'll just expose for the foreground. So I'll focus on the foreground, which is about a meter or two meters away from the lens. I was on a wide angle lens. I was on about F11 uh, with a polarizer on, and say the Case ND8 magnetic filter. And um, I literally just exposed for the water. Now what I wanted to do, and um, for the rock, so keep an eye on the histogram, but I wanted to keep the exposure as close as possible to the background, because obviously I wanted it looking natural, but I wanted a one second exposure or as close to a one second exposure as possible, just so when the water came in, if it ever did come back in again, I could wait, hit the shutter and wait for the water to go back out again. So luckily it did, it came in one more time and I got one shot, though annoyingly, being in novice mode, I didn't actually put the cable release to use, you know, so I actually had to press the camera button. So don't do that if you're using, if you're doing seascape photography, always use a cable release just so you can get the wave action perfect and you're not knocking your camera. So yeah, there's two, two techniques in this video. That is basically an exposure blend focus stack, but only in two shots. So talk us through the process of photographing the arseholes and the, uh, <laughs> the detail, <laughs> the detail, should we say? Of the, here we've got the heads. You've got the bums over there. Yeah. We've got the, we've got the bums. Bums are over there by the uh, by the coffee, and now he's photographing the heads. Looks good with your extension tube on a 50 mil lens, is it? Yeah. Coming out all right. Yeah. I'm just... Hang on, hang on. How many mils now? You got you got an 11 mil and a 16 mil. Was it an 18 mil? 18, 18. mil. Yeah. So 11 mil and 18 mil extension tubes yeah. on a 50 mil lens. At uh, what aperture? Uh... Your camera's still switched on. You take the lens off without the camera off. Yeah. Do you? Oh, you're a daredevil, you are. <laughs> the second one, we went the other side. As soon as the sun rose, we went the other side of, of Mumble's lighthouse, other side of the lighthouse, other side of the sort of beach um, to get a different angle, um, using the sunlight on the, on the, on the, um, the lighthouse. And I flew the drone over and I was I had a shot and I thought I'll take this and Dan was looking at the screen and he does this all the time and I don't know why I don't think to do this but I know he does it a lot. So it's a 12 megapixel raw file and he said why don't you do a vertical pano. So take one of the lighthouse at the bottom, one of it in the middle and one of it at the top so you have three HDR bracketed raw files per shot. So you're basically tripling your file size almost if you were able to um, the, the raw file, the overall photograph would be almost well, at least double the file size. So it gives you, you know, a, a, a workable file. And I thought, do you know what? I don't know why I don't think of doing this because you can't put on the DJI, what have I got, Air Mark 1, you can't rotate the, the camera to, to shoot land, um, to shoot vertically, you can only shoot landscape. So I thought I'd give that a go. 
uh, no filters, just straightforward. And that looked, that came out really, really good. So a bit, bit of a learning curve for me on this morning. And I thought I'd work through the, the one of the photographs and see what you think and whether or not it would help you. Because it meant that I didn't really have to worry about grads and stuff like that. So yeah, which is which can be dodgy by the sea because obviously you get splashes on your grads. It can ruin everything. Right then, so have a look at these files. So we're in Lightroom and we have got our base image, which as I said, was focused on the lighthouse and metered for the sky. And we've got our foreground shot, which again has gone back to flat, even though I've just changed that to landscape. There we are. So that's Adobe Landscape. I always photograph them in Adobe in the um, camera flat, so I get more detail in the shadows. I can see a bit better, but Lightroom seems to have changed that back. So there's our um, exposure for just the foreground. So you can see the sun has just come up over the headland and clip that there. So what we're going to do is we're going to merge the two together and end up with something that looks a little bit like that. Now, I'm just looking at this for the second time after I did it a couple of weeks ago, and I actually think it's hideous. I think it looks really HDR, but uh, it's not natural looking. But then you have to remember the light is the other side of it. So it's kind of a bit of a balance, but <laughs> I do think that looks a bit too cooked for me, um, if you know what I mean. So first thing we need to do is we need to get the white balance the same because we're going to merge two of these photographs together. We're going to, let's get rid of four. Let's get rid of that. So I hit star four and then get rid of them. Um, I will hit the, select both of them and put the white balance to about five and a half. I'm not going to touch the tint, but it just goes about five and a half. So that's got the white balance. It should be the same on both. Again, not doing it. So let's go that there. All right. Got the white balance five at five and a half on that one. Copy that one. Apple and C on a on a on a, on a Mac, and then obviously brings up this. So we can just select uh, check none and then clear uh, clear everything and click white balance. So we want the white balance the same on both photographs because obviously we want it to look natural. So let's paste the white balance on that one. And it's not a bad photograph already. I suppose it gives you an idea of what it should really look like. But yeah, five point six and twelve on there. So I'm going to do a very very basic. On this photograph, on the first photograph, we're just looking at the sky. So this this is basically what the grad would have given us. So we're gonna lift that a little bit. I'm not gonna to go too mad at this point. I'm gonna merge the two of them together in Photoshop and bring them back in, and then we can do a bit more cooking, if you will. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna try and keep it as natural as possible. I'm noticing the horizon's not quite straight there, and I'm probably gonna put a bit of something over them in the sky to give it a bit more color. But if we come back to this one, um, what I'm going to do is lift the exposure. This is obviously the one we've meet for, just the water. So we can see the sky's gone there now. If we get that exposure about right, I'm not going to do much to it because, to be honest with you, it, it, it is what it is. You know, I don't want it. I don't want it to look fake. So literally, that's pretty much all I do to this photograph. I'm not going to do anything else. The only thing I do is select both of them, come down to um, lens correction, enable profile corrections. That's all I'm going to do literally so for this point now all we're going to do is right click both of them go to editing open as layers in photoshop click that let it open in photoshop and uh yeah we'll, we'll do some more cooking man my computer's gone slow right here we are in photoshop so there's our sky and there's our foreground first thing to do is select both of them go on to edit and auto align layers now that's important even though the camera hasn't moved, the tripod hasn't moved, I always click auto, I never do anything else. The camera hasn't moved, but because you've moved the focal point, there's gonna be some sort of focus shift, if that makes any sense, because there's a physical, you can see the movement in the edge of the picture there, so there is some focus movement. That just means now the light out should be aligned in both images, um, which it might not have been because of the extreme difference. Yeah, okay. So that is fine. So there would have been some focus shift, some movement because of the difference in, in focal uh, range, if that makes any sense. So, okay, what we could do is we can go onto the first layer, which is the sky, and we can put a layer mask on that. I'm gonna do a quick edit now, just to give you an idea. And what I'm gonna do is click on the um, layer type. I'm gonna go to darken. Um, and that basically gives us the ability now, if I hit brush and press D, that will reset the brushes. So that will basically mean that we're back to black and white. Um, D will always give us a black background. So we don't want to press X and I'll swap, swap them back around. And then all I'm going to do is just bring back, and you can see on the right hand side, it's just bringing a hole in the filter that we've created there. So I'm just going to gently do that 40%. And to be honest with you, I'd probably even do it about 20% if I was doing it properly, but I'm going to try and do it quickly. 
and then I'm not going anywhere near the sky and I'm not going anywhere near the top of this, the ocean because I want that water and everything to kind of blend in to this photograph. I want it to introduce gently. I don't want it to be look fake, you know, although it is fake, I don't want it to look fake. So yeah, very, very gently done that. Down to 20% by pressing two on the keyboard just to bring the water back into the frame. But I'm really cautious about it looking fake. I just don't want a fake looking image. My problem is because I know it's fake, <laughs> it's gonna, I can't get past it. So I'm just gonna very, very carefully bring back. And you get the point, I don't need to go too nuts. You get the, you get the idea. So apologies if you think this already looks a bit fake. I do, but yeah. And if it does, all you've got to do is go back and adjust the base, the original raw files, and just make sure they're not. Because this side of the rocks needs to be dark, and it needs to be pitch black. The light's the other side of the cast of the lighthouse, so this side of the rock would be pitch black. There's no two ways about it. You have to remember the original file. Oh, I can't do it now, can I? The original file is um, is black, isn't it? So um, right then, so. I'm actually not that, you know, I want to do a quick edit here. I don't want to go nuts, but just to give you an idea. I'm going to just crop that now just to get rid of all that nastiness around the edges. But I'm not going to do any fancy cropping. I'm just going to do that. I'm going to try and get it, try and keep it as is. I'm just going to do, I think now, just bring it back into Lightroom. Um, faff around with that sky a little bit more. I like the dark foreground because I know the sky would have been really, really bright and the foreground would have been naturally dark. So I'm going to... Apple Shift and E will merge those two layers now on the right hand side. You see them just disappear into one layer. So that's just flattening that. And now when we save that, as it'll, it'll export now. Just click Apple and S and export that now as a TIFF back into Lightroom and we can work on that. So let's jump back into Lightroom. Right, here we are back in Lightroom and here is our TIFF file. So we can see the, uh, the dark off the sky there and the foreground off that file there. Uh, you see how much dynamic range we've got, but it's it's, it's looking, you know, I want to keep it natural looking. I don't want to go nuts, do I? So um, what shall we do? Well, I think it needs a bit of clarity just to make the rocks kind of pop and the detail on the rocks pop. I, don't, I never go above 20 with the clarity. I'm not going to touch dehaze because that's going to add contrast. I might hold my Alt key and lift the exposure a little bit until it starts to clip. I mean, you can see when it starts to clip there, it's, it's gone there, but I'm not going to go that high. What I do then is I bring the highlights down, which will only affect the sky. That's pretty much all I'm going to do. And now I'm going to, I still feel like that foreground is too bright. So I'm actually going to put a grad on the foreground, coming from the bottom, hold shift to keep it square, bring the grad all the way up there. Um, it always goes to that for some reason. Let's go to exposure and let's just darken that foreground a touch. But I'm also going to lift that white balance up in the foreground just to warm it. So it's catching that sun. So I've warmed that white balance right up so you can see if I get rid of that mask so you can see what it's done. It's just warmed that water up. It's got rid of that blue in the water. And that's pretty much all I'm going to do. I might add a bit of clarity in that grad as well. I might lift the whites in that grad just so it makes the water pop a little bit and the rocks, the detail in the rocks might be quite nice. So, uh, But again, I don't, I don't like doing much in the way of editing. Um, I might drop the shadows a touch blacks again as well just just to give it more natural looking image feel now what I could do now is get the brush and I could brush around this area here if I if I give that a gentle brush now and press O you can see what it's doing and I could use that brush layer just to brighten up that water which again is not sort of the sort of thing I would normally do because I tend to I'm quite a lazy editor so I tend to edit things in in seconds and um, yeah, that is it. So what we're gonna do now is enter that. That's looking a bit fake to me, but there we are. Enter that and we'll go into the crop tool and then we'll, with the crop tool, we'll hold command and in the Mac I can use that level then just to go across there and straighten that horizon because that's doing my head in. So I always do this twice because it, just to make double sure, horizons have to be perfect for me. There we are. Now it's not a perfect picture because there's far too much mid space in this image. Um, so I'm not really mad keen on it. But, um, oh, we didn't change the aspect. I'm gonna change, there's no cropping list at all, is there? Let's put a five by seven crop on there. And then, oh, five by seven crop and a bit more of the foreground. I think the camera should have been a lot lower to close that gap in the middle and bring more of that detail in that rock in the foreground. So 
Um, let's adjust the exposure, bring it back up. We want the histogram pretty much touching on the right hand side, but I don't want it looking fake. Um, yeah, so drop the shadows a little bit, so we've got a bit more natural look. And on the sky, I might even brighten the sky slightly. Me and my dog trying to get in in the background, just scratching at my door. Exposure there, and then I think the sky is a bit too warm, so I'm going to bring the temperature down a bit, and that's it. There we are, I'm going to leave it at that. I probably would faff around with it a little bit more on this one, actually just lift the shadows a little bit. I don't know. I don't know, you could go nuts, couldn't you? I find that I've, if, if I can't edit a photograph in normally in a, like less than two minutes, I kind of bin it. <laughs> but yeah, you get the idea. And um, that is the end-ish result. Oh, didn't have my brightness right up. Yeah, there you go. It's quite natural looking. Just needs that gap closing in the middle. And I don't like this white bar going through here. I'll probably Photoshop that out, whatever that is. And this clump here, which looks a bit unnatural as well. I don't know what it is. It's hitting the rocks funny. I thought I got a better photograph than that, but the idea was there, so I thought I'd share it with you. Anyway, I'll stick the drone photograph up, and uh, yeah, hope you enjoyed the video. Hope you found it useful, and I'm definitely going to adopt this focus stacking, exposure blending. I'm sure there's a, a shortcut name for it anyway. Cheating. Let's call it cheating technique from now on anyway. But anyway, hope you enjoyed the, the video. If you haven't already, hit the subscribe button. I'll see you again soon. Thanks for watching, guys. Take care.